There have been many tributes around the world to Queen Elizabeth, including in Paris. Look at that, the lights, they were turned off at the iconic Eiffel Tower as a show of respect to her. While here in this country, the Empire State Building lit up in royal colors, that's purple and silver. Earlier in the day, the bells at the Washington's National Cathedral tolled 96 times, one for each year of the Queen's life. And then the flags, they were lowered to half staff as well in the nation's capital and all around the country. You know, the Queen's connection to the U.S. goes back further than many can remember since her reign began before most of us were born. There were 14 presidents during the Queen Elizabeth's reign, and she met all but one, from Harry Truman all the way up to President Biden when he visited the U.K. just last year. Our Nancy Cordes is at the White House right now with more on a leader who was part of multiple generations of American history. Nancy, good morning. Good morning, Jerika. Yes, if you think about it, there are few people in history, if any, who knew as many U.S. presidents as she did. She hosted them. They hosted her. There were dances and horseback rides and a baseball game, all of it emblematic of that special relationship between her country and ours. Long before Camelot came to London, or President Reagan rode horseback with the Queen. And Princess Elizabeth makes her first appearance in the States. Yes, then Princess Elizabeth met her first American president, Harry Truman, more than 70 years ago in Washington. Very great pleasure for me, as the President of the United States, uh, to welcome you to the capital of our country. She came back as queen later that decade and met Dwight Eisenhower, later sending him her recipe for scones. Her Majesty hosted a dinner for John F. Kennedy and his wife Jackie at Buckingham Palace, then one for Richard Nixon, who once tried to set up his daughter Tricia with Prince Charles. That transatlantic alliance didn't take. The queen took Gerald Ford's hand as a dance partner in 1976 to celebrate the bicentennial of American independence from the British throne, a milestone that three decades later tripped up another president. You helped our nation celebrate its bicentennial in, 17, in 1976. She gave me a look that only a mother could give a child. Perhaps no president got the relationship right more than Ronald Reagan, who stayed and played with the queen at Windsor Castle. The pair also shared laughs in California, where Her Majesty hosted the Reagans aboard her royal yacht. The queen seemed just as home taking in America's pastime at a baseball game in Baltimore with George H.W. Bush in 1991. Mr. Speaker. Then, the next day in D.C., uniting both parties after the Gulf War. We have both learned from history that we must not allow aggression to succeed. There have been some presidential missteps, like when Mr. Trump stepped in front of the Queen. There were times the special relationship got a little too close, like this distinctly British embrace with First Lady Michelle Obama. To Her Majesty the Queen, to the vitality of the special relationship. Or when Mr. Obama kept talking, a royal mistake, as the band began to play the British national anthem. To the Queen. But throughout it all, the respect for this legendary monarch was always evident. But talk we will, listen we have to, disagree from time to time we may, but united we must always remain. The first time President Biden met the Queen was 40 years ago in 1982 when he was still a U.S. senator. And the last time he saw her was last year at Windsor Castle when he said that she reminded him of his mom. Last night, he signed a condolence book at the U.K. Embassy here in Washington and said that he is likely to attend the royal funeral in the days to come. Jerika? Nancy Cordes, for us at the White House, thank you so much.